Hello everyone! It's been a while, but we're back with a new video. Yup, this one has been one of our most requested topics. How to use a moisture meter. This is both a simple and complex matter, and we're here to help you clear up any confusion and provide you with some pro tips. Okay, let's get started. The moisture meter is used at the end of the flower drying process to make sure that the flower are dry enough for the curing process. Remember, we're targeting 10 to 12 percent, with 12 percent being the highest that we would still consider as dry. Most moisture meters have two pins that are inserted into a material to test for the moisture content. The way this works is through testing the electrical resistance of the material, in which the nug itself becomes part of the electrical circuit. Due to the fact that electrical resistance of fibrous materials changes in direct proportion to its moisture content within different ranges, the device is able to calculate the moisture content from the resistance numbers. Let's walk through how to do this. To begin, select the wood setting on your moisture meter. If multiple wood types are available, choose the softest wood. First, find the right size nug to test. Make sure the size of the nug from stem to the top is at least 20% longer than the distance between the moisture meter prongs. Remember, you have to basically create an electrical circuit for this to work. Second, identify the location of the stems. If the nug is too large and is trimmed too tight, then find the center of the nug where the stem would be and insert the two prongs to that location. Pro tip! Woody and fibrous materials generally have a moisture gradient, where the moisture on the outside is lower than the core. Therefore, to get the most accurate reading, you'll need both prongs as close to the center of the stem as possible. If they are not both at the center, your readings will be off slightly depending on where the prongs are. 3. The reading will initially jump around a bit, but once it stabilizes, that'll be the more accurate reading. 4. Rinse and repeat on the remaining nugs in your batch. Generally speaking, to get an accurate representation of moisture content for the entire batch of flour, you'll need a sample around 10% of the nugs. The nugs should be of differing sizes, so you can get an idea of the range of the moisture gradient you'll see. Larger nugs will dry slower than smaller nugs in trim, so it's a good idea to separate these into different batches for post-harvest processing. Another thing to consider is the temperature. Most moisture meters are calibrated for use from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Using it beyond this range will require a math correction on the back end. Static electricity will also impact the reading, so make sure you try to remove all the static from yourself prior to doing the moisture meter tests. Okay, some disclaimers here. The meter readings are only a guide and not gospel. Readings from the same nug might differ between different readings, either using the same or different moisture meters. This might be caused by different pin penetration depth, different electrodes on the meters, and or different temperatures. The whole goal here is to estimate the amount of moisture as best we can. For more accurate moisture reading, you can do the oven bake moisture content test. The process here is to take a nug, weigh it on a gram scale with two decimal places, then put it into the oven at a minimum of 220 degrees Fahrenheit for at least four hours. Then take it out and re-weigh it. Now subtract this new number from the original weight and you'll have the amount of moisture that was evaporated from the nug. This is the most accurate way of getting the moisture content number. And essentially, the moisture meter is trying to approximate this. However, the oven bake method will consistently produce higher moisture content numbers as the terpenes and cannabinoids, or any other volatile compound in the plant matter, will also be baked off and evaporated via the heat. For growers, we only want to know the amount of water content. Since some strains have high terpenes and cannabinoids, they may make up a large percentage of the evaporated weight. Therefore, the moisture meter is more effective at providing us with actionable information instead of other methods. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to ask any additional questions in the comments below. Yep, and we'll see you next time on Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Bag. Bag.